Oh, I'm so sorry. What was that? Oh, you only like the green dildos and the red ones are just too girthy for you? <laughs> Girl, stop tripping. You're going to get used to it. And after a while, you might even start to like them. Crypto crackheads and cryptilians, welcome to the Red Dildo Party. Today is Thursday, March 5th, and you are about to get timified, so let's get after it. Um, B Pro, uh, so yesterday in that on the fly before dinner video that I made uh, as things were crashing, and uh, um, my emotions are, uh, I would say, on an emotional level. Um, I've been pretty, I've had a lot of stimulus or stimuli throughout the four years of, of, uh, you know, making plenty of mistakes, buying glory and not buying blood. Um, but, uh, and since I had been buying down where my cursor, eh, I didn't buy under point oh double oh two. I was buying about right. I was buying the breakout. I was buying about right here. Um, <laughs> I caught it at a perfect time. Uh, so I didn't have to buy here, wait for my money, you know, all this time. That's, you know, that's like three days. So anyway, um, in my video yesterday, uh, at time about five minutes and 40 something seconds, um, I mention the number. I said it could be the daily 21 here, which is kind of my guess. Point double oh three six four. So I was just repeating what I was saying there because I'm not fancy enough with video editing <laughs> and I don't want to take the time to have to have to do it all. I do this on the fly, people. Um, but because uh, I got a job to do, <laughs> I, even though I work from home and I can spend uh, an hour doing this sometimes. But anyway, so yeah, so in that video yesterday, I was trying to give you a heads up of to where it could come down to kind of a worst yet most, but still has a 10% likelihood of happening um, uh, probability. And uh, in that moment, I said, I think it'll actually hit this. And then I said, point double O, double O what? Point double O three, six, four, right? So when, and, and also at the, so point double O three, six, four, let's just see how close it was. So it, I said point double oh three six four. It came down to point double oh three four two. So I was two ten thousands off. Um, and uh, so if you decided to make orders around here per that suggestion, which I had already played the four hour eighty nine, and I straddled my orders, and the way I straddled was was with this one because I saw Bitcoin falling and I thought yeah it'll probably wick blow up pretty hard <laughs> however this red area this red area um, still was not even close to, <laughs> to daily 21 I could have made a better buy um, however if you know somebody had listened to that in straddled orders around the 21 um, you know that's why this one is really effective uh, extremely effective and if you're trying to sell tops um, you know a lot of times it doesn't come all the way up here you only get some sold uh, this might not be the best uh, and sometimes you know if you think it might come shy of a top you might do this or just you know pick any of them honestly it's just it's it's a guessing game uh, and and you can back test it by looking left on different time frames and see you know, at key levels, what did it do? How did price approach it? Did it drop it? If it did drop, what else was happening in the market? Stuff like that. And you can kind of come up with your own system. I don't have a system developed. Um, I still pick one of these on a gut feel. And a lot of times I just use, um, a lot of times I just use one of these two in the middle. If I'm leverage trading, I almost always use, uh, which I don't suggest anybody, anybody <laughs> unless you are a really good trader and you have made money for more than three five no six months straight uh, I've, I've probably gone on a roll making money leverage trading four months straight uh, but then my emotions got to me and i thought i was smarter than my system and my gut took over my brain it, it hijacked my brain and i lost all my earnings pretty quickly uh, that i had built up uh, <laughs> over over four months and i've done that five times in a row um uh, over the years until i got better and i could uh, sustain uh winnings but anyway um but uh, as the bull market approached there's more money in a bull market in altcoins than there is in leverage trading uh so uh i i just 
closed my positions and started buying things like Beepro, right? Uh, but anyway, if you uh, chose to, you know, to straddle this way, and you played, you know, this the what I mentioned in that video. You you would be sitting freaking awesome right now. Um, your average buy-in price, you know, maybe would be around here, okay. And then right now you would be up thirty-two percent. All right, that's awesome. So if you bought a thousand, if if you put a thousand dollars of orders down there, straddled that way, you would have a uh, one thousand. 310 bucks right now so this is the power of buying blood people this is the power of it in a bull market in bear markets i suggest you get out and get flat getting flat means stable like us dollars stable coins earning interest um because you lend your stable coins on uh, platforms that give you like it's ridiculous it's better than any bank um ever like by far i mean the average is 10 point something percent yearly, um, but some of these smaller uh, decentralized exchanges that offer more leverage, like 100 uh, times leverage, people lose their money faster, therefore they can pay you more interest, uh, and one of them is called DYDX, um, and you know, as we approach Christmas of this year, uh, you know, I think you should get on TradingView and look at what price of Bitcoin. So everything pretty much follows Bitcoin. So if you want to know what the whole market is, so just look at Bitcoin, right? That's all you got to do. Or Ethereum. I mean, Ethereum, yeah, I would look at Bitcoin. Um, and just look at what happens uh, to price around uh, around both Christmas and the New Year. So you can make your choice. Okay, what should I be doing with my crypto holdings versus should I get into stable coins? And if I do want to get into stable coins, what percent? Do I want to take 50%, all that kind of stuff, or 100%, right? So even if it goes up like two times after Christmas and you're sitting there watching it go, oh, I'm in stable coins, I'm losing on all this opportunity right when you take your stable coins out and buy as it's going parabolic, if you take it out just a little bit before, it's going it, to, I mean, it'll probably crash on you. Um, and uh, conversely, though, uh, and it's impossible to get tops. So don't let that feeling get to you because in the in the flip side, let's say you hold it, hold it, hold it, and you, you want to squeeze every penny out and then it crashes on you. And now you've lost 30% uh, from the top. Uh, but if you had just, you know, gotten out a little early and watched it rise 30%, you know, the feelings are still there, right? You want to get sucked in, but I think those feelings are better than um, staying in too long and seeing it crash down because it sucks watching your money go down. So even even if you get stable um, around Christmas time or something like that and, and earning like 20% interest, your money is still getting bigger, right? Um, so, and when it does crash, your money's getting bigger while the market's crashing. So, um, you know... Uh, I don't know how I got on that tangent, but anyway, um, uh, something about you're up 30%. Um, but anyway, uh, so if you think you're holding crypto long-term holds and stuff, you need to get on TradingView and look at um, <laughs> look at what uh, cryptocurrency has done. Now, could this cycle be a double cycle? Absolutely. Um, to where a long-term hold might work out. Um, but, uh, uh, but, you know... Uh, I think that if it was a double, uh, there's going to be a flash crash of 50%. And to get correct and get back up to the top, uh, it could take like four months, right? So um, even in a situation where a long-term hold might be good, in those four months of a dip and back, you could have been earning you know, 20 to 40% DYDX exchange decentralized if you lend your DAI on there. DAI is a stable coin, always it's like Tether. Um, um, but... Uh, uh, you could be earning 40% while it's dipping and then coming up in four months. So that whole four months, you would have been, you know, saw your money drop and now you're even after four months and your money could have been growing that whole time, right? So this is not financial advice. I am uh, not a financial advisor. I am just talking to myself while recording and putting on a video for my future use uh, so I can, uh, this is my trading journal. <laughs> um, and uh, not providing financial advice to anybody. But anyway, um, so if you straddled your orders, uh, Hopefully you come to this channel for tangents, right? <laughs> but I, hopefully my tangents are valuable because I'm trying to keep you safe. I want your, I'm doing this for the kids, right? I'm doing this for the kids. I want them to drive a Hummer to high school or to college and go to college paid for, um, like I did. I was very fortunate. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I came out with no student debt, which was awesome. Um, so I owe my dad a big one <laughs> as he gets up there in age. But it, anyway, uh, so 
you know, if you put this, uh, so that's the power of this one. I didn't mention this one last time I brought this up. So where my cursor is right now, this guy, that's the power of that one. Now, the, the power of uh, this one is that, you know, over time, this will average out better than if you always do this one. So, or, or, or these two. The middle ones will average out just as good as these. Um, so I use these mostly for leverage, but if you decided to use this one, in this situation it would have won. But over time, it will, um, the middle two will probably come out slightly on top, uh, by the way. So I usually use one in the middle two uh, if I'm using uh, non-leverage trading. So yeah, uh, if you happen to catch, if you happen to um, take, you know, that section of the video and you uh, you put orders around this uh, daily 21, uh, I want to know. I, you know, I want to know who did better than I did um, because I played I played the four hour 89 and I'm I'm only up. So I did straddle my orders lower. Um, so I probably averaged in about right there. I'm only up 10.3 percent, 10.4 percent, right? So if you got this baby down here, gee whiz. So maybe averaged in around 0.00351, you're up 33 percent. So if you, if you got that, I would like to hear it. Um, and anyway, so that's B Pro Trade. And again, remember, um, this could scream up and it's going to fill out. Now, now that we've gone down slightly lower, um, how do we redraw this triangle? All right, I think I had my triangle drawn like this earlier. Okay, so now that we have to redraw it, what does this mean? Well, it's kind of alluding back to the idea that I've been saying over and over and over, Bore, yeah, get ready for a boring March. Well, and earlier I was thinking March 6th at the earliest, March 8th for a breakout. Well, now it's going to be a boring March. Um, it's probably going to fill out a range for quite a bit more because, um, you know, Bitcoin's pressure down kind of puts pressure on the market. And, uh, you know, um, the folks who are buying altcoins are seeing a lot of red and the, they're... Uh, you have to think of the whole market. You know, the the decisions of tens of thousands of people across the world, New Zealand, you know, South Korea, wherever, um, Romania, right? Um, and uh, in Russia, Mother Russia. Um, so anyway, this triangle is getting redrawn now. And what you can see here is that uh, the support that it found was right here. I think it looks better on the day. No, it does not. It looks better on the two hour. Yeah, so it found the support here. So this was a lot of support, people. I mean, look at the look at the horizontal line. See the horizontal line going up and down. If you uh, tag it right at this two-hour candle body, and you look left and keep it right there, look, perfectly found that candle body, that candle body, this wick, that wick, uh, kind of that wick, um, and that's the support. So, you know, that's the so. You know, if in trading, your go-to things are pick a good time frame to look at candles and identify horizontal, most likely areas of support, the strongest areas of support in a range. You need to, you need to look for two minimum, and I kind of messed up. I should have looked for three. I missed this one. I totally missed it. Um, I saw it. But I thought it was going to play this guy. This looked very, very obvious. However, here's the problem. If something's obvious, people and bots know it, and people who want to scare you out know that. So they will do, they will, they will crash below or crap, you know, rise above that obviousness and then go back exactly to what was obvious, <laughs> which is right now, right? Uh, because right now we are going above that support. But anyway, uh, two thing, uh, there, your two go-to things to look at is uh, one, your pick the right time frame, so the right hologram, and identify body candles of support, which are horizontals. So find at least two horizontals. In this case, we should have found three. That's step one. Step two is also uh, using different holograms or the time frames up here. Um, uh, uh, use the moving averages. So moving averages are essentially, they're often diagonals in a bull market. Right now, look, they're going down, but, uh, but moving averages. And then three, try to look at which moving average or averages on different time frames, the daily, the four hour, or, or on bigger coins uh, like Bitcoin and Ethereum, the weekly particularly, try to look at those those key uh, moving averages uh, and 
how they are approaching support somewhere, all right? Those are the three things to look out for. Time frame candle bodies, pick horizontal support. Uh, multiple time frames, look at moving averages. Three, look at where those guys are crossing. And, you know, there are a lot of ways to trade, but, um, you know, those, those that, that's a pretty no-brainer way. <laughs> I mean, it works a lot. Uh, and it works almost every So that is... Uh, that's B Pro, um, and I you should already know what we are, what we're looking at here. Oh, I, I would got off topic here once again. Um, so, so now we have to redraw the triangle. Look how much longer it is, folks. Actually, did I even draw it right? Look, now we go out to April. So 70% is about around April 1st. This could go to April 1st. Will it? I don't think so. Why? So using technical analysis here um, is uh, if I may add a fourth thing that's no brainer, try to find some origin lines. And for BPRO, I don't know if these origin lines are gonna hold up, um, but for something like uh, BPRO or for something like Bitcoin, the origin lines are gonna stay pretty much forever. Uh, and I think I've already, uh, the, let's see, Bitfinex, I mean, these are, so you need to be on the weekly at least. Um, so look at my origin lines. So the very top is connecting the two peaks, all right, and then I need to remove my Bollinger Bands that are in the way. Uh, and then the dark green, so don't don't look at the neon green one. I just drew that, um, and it was a good thing I drew it too. Um, I drew it for other reasons, but the dark uh, green lines that you see going here, um, so the dark green ones, uh, those are, those are or so the white one and the two dark green ones are origin lines of Bitcoin, and they will always play, like forever. I mean, literally, probably for 80 years. Um, and uh, so... Uh, hopefully for eight years. <laughs> that means Bitcoin will stay strong, but they might be redrawn at some time. Um, but uh, anyway, I mean, look, this is going back to uh, to 2013. All right, so uh, the support here and uh, and past support becomes future what? Future resistance. So look, it wicked up, almost pinged off. Resistance at that fourteen thousand dollar run. Resistance at our run from the breakout of our all-time high. Now, now that it's become resistance twice, now and it's in the recent past, what do you think it will become? Future support. How long will it stay support? Well, historically, I mean, it actually might not even become support. Uh, we might just go parabolic past it and then crash right through it. But anyway. Um, Right now, I mean, look at this candle. It looks like it's, so look at this red one. It pinged right off of it. This green one, it, it, it started down and it's it's heading north of it. And where does this candle come down to? Um, 43.85. So how does this line up with what I'm thinking for uh, Bitcoin at uh, 39,500? Well, on a weekly candle, it'll probably wick below it and it'll probably close above it or close right at it. That's probably what's gonna happen. So on the daily, you might have two or three red ones and then it'll come back up, but on the weekly candle, or perhaps monthly, it'll probably close above it, or right at it, or just barely under it, because it's support. It's probably going to act as support on the weekly or monthly, but not on the daily or four hour. And it's going to hit this line. I mean, the probability of hitting this line or below is probably over, mm, it's probably over 70%. All right, anyway, back to BPRO. So trying to draw origin lines, if I may add a fourth no-brainer thing to try to keep you safe in crypto and making good choices, um, so one thing um, also that I missed, well, I didn't miss it. I just never said it. Um, and honestly, I did let my, I should have mentioned this because I think I let my bullish emotions get the best of me here. And I should have covered this. Um, you know, when I was covering things like it could crash back down, um, I should have covered this idea. So I drew these origin lines, resistance and support right throughout this whole run in the middle of it. So what this means is look at all of the trading volume. For how long was trading volume almost 100% within these lines? 
20 days, okay? And since we broke all time high, you can't, I mean, it's hard to use any of this uh, back here for origin lines. So that's why I don't know if these will hold up, but these will probably, hold, these could hold up the rest of the year. And then you'll have to redraw origin lines, which might stay for the rest of, you know, all time for it. Or, or maybe in eight years, you'll have better origin lines. Uh, so anyway, what I should have mentioned was, look historically over those 20 days, almost 100% of trading volume was in here. So what is the chance of this coming down and, uh, you know, dipping below and kind of writing the bottom of the triangle and filling out some of this uh, trading volume area? It's kind of high. So, um, so will this come all the way out to April? Uh, over here where my cursor is, uh, the vertical line, and if you go straight down, it says April 1st. I don't think it will because I think it will respect these and probably break out here. So my new guess is March 26th or before. Um, I don't think it'll come all the way down here. I don't think it's going to be, I mean, it could. I mean, this does satisfy the idea of boring March. So it might. Um, but if it, if it comes across and hits this line, and you've been, you know, uh, you know, taking 10, uh, 10 percent and, you know, uh, putting limit orders, uh, not not uh, not market orders or to sell uh, and then use that 10 percent to buy here one last time before it skyrockets. That would be a good play. But I have a feeling that it'll only wick below these. So if we can do this, it might just go like this, fill it out, go like this and then fill it out, fill it out. And then it'll pr try once, try twice and then. Boom. So I think, you know, it might it might not break out till the 27th, 26th. So it's going to be the 27th or before, most likely. Um, and it's possible that it breaks out before, um, but uh, I think it's going to follow until Bitcoin. Now, why do I think it'll follow till Bitcoin? There is a, um, so the answer to this question, I and uh, I think I will wrap up. Uh, with that so i'm going to make a more bitcoin and uh, market video and that's going to have all the you know my moving average tricks and stuff how to set them up um, but one more thing for beat bro here uh is uh now i forget what i was going to say um oh yeah uh, the answer to that question uh, also is the reason why all small altcoins pop so hard and they go up Bigger than anything on page one of Coin Market Cap. Bigger than VeChain. Bigger than Cardano. Bigger than Bitcoin. Bigger than Ethereum. Here, here is the reason why. It's the interplay between the pairings. So check this out. This is like a super pro tip. Um, so watch. As Bitcoin falls, okay. So Bitcoin's falling and BPRO stays at the same uh, level. Let's say it stays at 0 0.005. It stays on the US dollar, dollar pairing. So this chart here is the BTC pairing. This is not US dollar value. On the, uh, so if BPRO stays level at 0 0.005 as Bitcoin's falling to 39.5, what is this chart going to do? It's going to go up because it's increasing uh, versus Bitcoin, but it's staying flat versus US dollars. So what does that mean? That means you are filling out a new range and creating a higher support. And then now that it's now filled out in support with the very high unlikelihood of crashing below it, what's gonna happen when Bitcoin goes up? It has a higher support and it's gonna go even higher relative. So as Bitcoin's going up and an altcoin goes up versus Bitcoin, it's magnified because it's going up, you know, it's amplified. It's going up uh, versus Bitcoin and Bitcoin's going up. So like it, it, the acceleration is much higher, right? Does that make sense? So it's going up. Uh, so it creates a base versus Bitcoin as Bitcoin's going down. And then as Bitcoin comes up, everybody gets bullish again. And people are reading the uh, BTC chart, or at least the bots are. And BPRO is making gains on Bitcoin as Bitcoin's making gains on uh, US dollar. So it's gains on top of gains. And that's why altcoins is where the money is, people, uh, especially small alts. Um, so that, that's why. That, that is why. <laughs> it's, the, it's the two different pairings. Um, and, uh, and so the cool thing is here, we're going to fill out a higher range uh, on the Bitcoin chart. And look. Historically, though, as bit bearing chart, we are not at all time highs. So, you know, if if B Pro gets up here, um, 
if BPRO gets up here as Bitcoin's going up, I mean, you know, it could hit some really big all-time highs on the um, on the U.S. dollar pairing. So let's go back to uh, late December of let's go back to December sixteenth, twenty nineteen. How high was Bitcoin? Seventy five hundred. So you see that? So it was really high on that pairing, but price was actually way lower. So on the Bitcoin chart, price was the the price was higher, right? Even though price was like super low. I mean, it was like it was way it was it was a tenth of what it is now, right? Uh, because Bitcoin was so low. And so if you want to try to figure out. Um, you know what's going on you need to go back and forth between those and that's kind of a reason why uh, altcoins are you know small alts are where big money is um, it's also where big losses are during a bear market <laughs> so uh, actually all alts I mean Bitcoin everything uh, alts and Bitcoin um, yeah, the big losses in there that's why getting flat is so important so that's what I got for you today on my Pro train and uh, stay safe in crypto and you just got uh, uh, timified my cryptilians and crypto crackheads